Police have finally charged a man in connection to the murder of Tupac Shakur in 1996. I think he was only 25 years old and what he was able to achieve in that time, none of us can compare. It felt like there was a cover-up and that we would never find out the truth because so many people were involved in this. They blamed P. Diddy, they blamed Suge Knight. Suge Knight was in the car and even he was suspected in setting up the shooting because Tupac was going to leave his record label. And there was all that beef with the notorious B.I.G. Even the police were suspects in this because a lot of police officers were working when they were off duty for these crime gangs like Death Row, uh, the record label that Suge Knight was head of, who Tupac worked on, and P. Diddy as well. He had cops on the payroll. So nobody was trustable in this scenario. People gave up hope a long time ago that we would ever get the answers. Tupac's mother was campaigning for decades to find out who did this to her son, and she has since died. There is no justice for anyone, really. It's too little too late, but at least we have an answer now. Now, let me take you back in time to the night of the murder, September 7th, 1996. This was the night of the Mike Tyson fight against Selden in Las Vegas. Tyson and Tupac were very good friends. Tupac had referenced Tyson in a lot of his songs. And as always, Tupac, when he rolled up to these places, he was deep. He had all of his guys with him, and it was a problem for anyone who they recognized. Unfortunately, for a guy called Orlando Anderson, who was a crip, a, a rival gang to the bloods that Tupac had with him, they spotted him in the lobby of the hotel where the fight was taking place. So you'll see the CCTV footage here in the hotel lobby. Tupac had already attacked Orlando Anderson. They'd had a previous beef. And you can see the guy in the white here, that's Shug Knight, who was putting a beat down on this guy as well. They're kicking him. And as far as they're concerned, it's point proven. Tupac is seen walking out of the hotel here, strutting as if he owns the place. Now, as far as we're aware, Tupac and Shug then make the decision to go to a nightclub called the 662, which is the digits on your phone for MOB. It's mob-owned mafia type shit where they've owned this nightclub and this is where they hang out. And this is the final photograph ever taken of Tupac and Shug. Uh, Shug at the driver's side, Tupac on the passenger side. Now, obviously, what was known at that moment was Tupac pulled up at some traffic lights on the Las Vegas Strip and another car, which was a white Cadillac, pulled up alongside and emptied the clip into the car Tupac was hit killed he did survive for about six days I think it was six or seven days after um, the initial shot went in but he wasn't conscious he'd been hit through the lungs which had filled up with blood and you know he was never going to be the same again after that which people didn't really accept because he'd also been shot like a year before this and survived that so Tupac was like immortal and indestructible so for him to actually be shot again people kind of were just like he'll pull through because he didn't die immediately people just believed he'd pull through. Orlando Anderson was obviously the main suspect, being that he was the guy who got jumped by these guys. However, he was killed not long after this, and as were a lot of people, as you can imagine, because in these wars, that's the way it was. But one guy who was in the car didn't get killed. And unfortunately for him, he's decided to do YouTube interviews about 20 odd years later and has basically incriminated himself. Introducing Keefe D. Uh, Death Row guys were going to have a concert at the 662 Club. So we went to the 662 Club. Tupac and Shook, they didn't ever show up. So we left. So Orlando and his guys were actually waiting at this 662 Club, waiting for Shug Knight and Tupac. They didn't show up. So these guys went out looking for them. All the chicks was like, Tupac, Tupac, and he was out there hey, like a celebrity, like he was in the parade. If he wouldn't even been out the window, we, we would have never seen him. My partner busted you. When we pulled up, I was in the front seat. You said the shots came from the back. Big Dre, Orlando. Who shot Tupac? I'm keep it for the cold of the streets. It just came from the back seat, bro. So he's claiming, oh, it came from the back seat. I was in the passenger seat. I mean, you would, wouldn't you? Because like, what he's trying to do here is get all the clout for being involved and allude to the fact that it was me. But 
Yeah, it came from the back seat. And those guys just so happen to be dead. A likely story. And the fact is, he's been doing interviews about this for years now. It kind of goes back to what Chris Rock once said about if you ever want to get away with uh, a murder, just put a demo tape in the pocket of whoever you kill because police don't care about rapper deaths. These are interviews from years ago. Keefe D, I feel remorse for Tupac, but attacking Orlando gave us the green light. This is four years ago. How it took this long is insane. So this is the mugshot of Keefe D, aka Dwayne Davis, and he's taken into custody by Las Vegas detectives. He's 60 years old, and the, the brother of uh, Tupac, Mo Prem, who is his stepbrother, has actually slammed detectives and said, we've been through decades of pain. They've known about this guy. He's been running his mouth for years, so why now? That is the interesting thing. They've clearly known about this guy for a long time. W what, what has changed? Is someone not paying up to the cops who were keeping him, you know, safe? Maybe. There's no way that they've just randomly thought, you know, we'll get him now. This was four years ago he was given these interviews. So Chief Deputy District Attorney Mark D. G. M. Como has described Davis as an on-ground, on-site commander who ordered the death of Shakur. So while he may not have been the one to pull the trigger, because he was in the front, as he said, it came from the back, he's probably handed them the gun, and I think there's even footage of him saying that. So now... Whether or not he pulled the trigger, he was in command, and they are going to charge him as if he ordered the death. For 27 years, the family of Tupac Shakur has been waiting for justice. This guy is bragging as if <laughs> we finally cracked it. Mate, the guy was doing YouTube interviews four years ago, basically telling you, leading every breadcrumb there, yeah, it was me. To announce the arrest of 60-year-old Dwayne Keith Davis, a.k.a. Keefe D., for the murder of Tupac Shakur. Well, I know there's been many people who did not believe that the murder of Tupac Shakur was important to this police department. I'm here to tell you that was simply not the case. <laughs> You can't give it, I told you so, and it took you 20 fucking seven years, mate. It's still, sorry it took this long, but at least we got the guy. You don't get to gloat now. This man's doing a victory lap. Who's laughing now, eh? Still the criminal. He spent the majority of his life as a free man. He was just about to collect his old age pension at bus pass, and now you're locking him up. His life's basically over anyway. Our goal at LVMPD has always been to hold those accountable and responsible for Tupac's violent murder accountable. Just like we do for every homicide victim in our city. <laughs> He's just really using this as, a, as an opportunity to do a bit of good PR. So let's go back to the cop now who found Tupac at the scene of the crime and actually held Tupac as he took some of his last conscious breaths. Check this out. This man doesn't live far from Keefe D. They live like a couple of streets away from each other. And this is the guy who was investigating the case. They always say it's the one closest to you. Most everybody who is involved in this whole incident is dead at this point. So um, I think, you know, you run your mouth, you, 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 talk, to, <laughs> you talk yourself into a search warrant. Uh, maybe maybe you've even talked yourself into a murder charge. You know, we don't know that yet. We do now because he has been charged with murder and they have found bullets in the house. Bullets that potentially could link him to the murder. Um, it's unlikely after 27 years that they'd be the same bullets, but apparently they potentially are from a similar gun and they're going to obviously run those checks. The reason this gets even more interesting now is because of who Keefe D is linked to. There was always speculation that p diddy was the one who was ordering the hit on tupac because they'd had long-standing beef tupac was talking mad shit about him and also p diddy publicly had put a warrant out for a, a death row chain that they all used to wear he put a, a money out saying if you bring me one of those i'm going to give you whatever it was and you don't get chains like that but peacefully yeah like so he'd already made threats in that way and the problem for p diddy is keefe they has publicly spoken about looking after P. Diddy. So I want to backtrack. You said that um, you was on top of the world until you met Puffy. What you mean by that? Man, shit. I was getting 300 kilos a month, man. Balling, man. Brother Love, come show some love. That's all I can fucking say. Show some love, Brother Love. You know, shit. Brother, I'll be seeing you doing your little pretty dance and all that, man. Show some love, homie. Come on, man, don't be like that, brother love. I was on top of the world until I met your motherfucking ass, dude. Shit is wrong, dude. Come on, homie. I need something to throw a dog a bone or something. Fuck. To convert that into English, what he's saying is, is I got involved with P. Diddy. P. Diddy went to the moon, killed it, made all of his millions, and now I'm sitting here 
where's my love? Where, where, where's my hand out? I, I'm the one struggling now, and I looked after you. Apparently, Keefe D has detailed the motive for the shooting was a retaliation and to collect a $1 million bounty, he claimed, Sean Puffy Combs, a.k.a. P. Diddy, offered to him and his gang to kill Tupac and Suge Knight. P. Diddy has yet to be arrested, but refuses to address the allegations in public interviews. Now that this guy has been arrested, P. Diddy must be shitting himself. Given the nature of the the hit record hit him up by Tupac where he went at both P Diddy and the Notorious B.I.G given the fact that Tupac already blamed this first shooting that he survived on P Diddy and B.I.G who else had the motive to do this people suggested Suge Knight was behind it because Tupac was wanting to leave the record label he wanted him better dead than alive somewhere else but Suge was in the car he got a bullet grazed off of his head like are you really going to put yourself in that situation this makes a lot more sense given that there is an established link between p diddy and keefe d if you're p diddy now and you've had decades of success after this all went down to now end up in prison would be horrendous for him it's funny because eminem even alluded to this like a year or two ago in a diss record to machine gun kelly machine gun kelly is signed to p diddy and eminem must have been pissed off at the fact that p diddy had allowed a machine gun kelly to come at him and starts pointing fingers. Eminem says in the song Kill Shot, but this idiot's boss pops pills and tells him he's got skills, but Kells, the day you put out a hit is the day Diddy admits that he put out the hit that got popped killed. He literally said it. And if there's anyone who should know about this shit, it's a guy who's best mates with Dr. Dre and has been in rap at the highest level for the last 30 fucking years himself. But he does say at the end, I'm just playing Diddy. You know I love you. So that gives you that, All right, was he being serious? But yes, everything points to yes. P. Diddy killed Tupac. You heard it here first. I'm in London. They can't get me. And I remember like idolizing Tupac and loving his music when I was really young and wondering like, is he alive? And all of these bullshit, you know, theories about him being in Jamaica or wherever the fuck, which does seem better than death. But all these years later, we finally find out that it was Orlando Anderson who pulled the trigger, Keefe D who gave him the gun and, and, and set it up and P Diddy who paid them. Done, done. Another case solved by Detective Jordy. You're welcome. Let me know what you think of all of this in the comments below because pretty much everyone who was involved in this is either dead or in jail. Look at Suge Knight. He is in jail. He's a shadow of the man he was. So really, there is no more re retribution to be had. It is just jail for Keithy Day. But if they bring down P. Diddy, a billionaire, wow, that is mental. And he really, he's recently been giving all of his publishing rights back to the artists that he basically held hostage for two decades. So he's feeling a bit charitable weirdly lately. I don't know why. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Hit that like button. Stay subscribed to the True Geordie YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.